Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So tonight we are going to be making a lot, we're going to be doing a live tong forging demonstration, making a pair of knife maker's tongs. Uh, these particular tongs, they're made so this way you can hold stuff just like so. The blade will pass right through. So for anybody who's watching this on the playback, that's what it, that's what we will be doing. If you didn't catch it live. Do we have any watchers yet? Yep, we got nine. Mark S. says hello. Brian Neely hey, says Mark howdy. S. Hey, Brian Neely. Good to see y'all. Well, hear you all. <laughs> Can everybody hear me okay? Hopefully I'm coming through. Sounds good. Yeah, right now we have a major storm coming in through Ohio, so uh, hopefully you guys can hear and see us just fine. John Coffey says, evening to you all. Quarter Horse Forge, hi guys. Cody Dixon. Hey, good to see y'all. Thomas Urso, nice to have you all. So, all so. right. So tonight we're going to do a knife forging demonstration. Not a knife forging, sorry. We are going to be doing <laughs> knife tong Whoa there, forging boy. demonstrations. Yeah. Um, we're going to do that tonight. I'm going to make a set of knife tongs that we're going to be giving away in next Friday's live stream. So I'll be sure to put the secret password to use to get in there to, to win those for the following one somewhere in this video. Pay close attention. Yeah, pay close attention for all those people that like to skip ahead to the end. Oh. All right, we're up to 27. Let's see all who we right. got. All right, good to have everybody here. We got Maros Vodzak, Peter Holding. Good to have um, you all let's here. See. Coldy Dixon. Mike G, John Coffey. Mike G, good to have you. John Coffey, how you doing, sir? Uh, all right. Very cool, very cool. So one of the other things we'll be doing is we'll be giving away the pair of scrolling tongs I made in the previous live demonstration. So that's what those look like there. Can everybody see that all right? Yeah, yeah, they look good. Okay. We'll be giving those away. Somewhere in this live stream, we've got a bunch of names in the hat. Well, look forward to doing that. And what else? Oh, we have a class announcement coming up. I'll yes, be teaching do. a workshop or a class at SOFA, Southern Ohio Forge and Anvil. Uh, you can find it on their website at sofablacksmiths.org. That's right. And I will be teaching a class on making a decorative candle holder. Let me have that in the candle. Yeah, candle. Not a candle holder without the candle. <laughs> That's right. All right. Got to go the. So I'll be teaching a class on how to forge this. Which you see here. I'm doing some pipe forging. Is that all in the shot yeah, and everything? Yeah. Bring it a bit closer so they can see some details. There we go. There. So I'll be teaching a class on forging that type of candle holder. I'm thinking about doing a weighted base instead of lead filled. This is lead filled. So we'll probably just do a, a larger steel base so this is way it's more stable. But that's what we will be making in class. Mm -hmm. um, and I've also shared the information for that on our Facebook page. Yep. So if you are on our Facebook for Christ Centered Ironworks, you'll see the announcement there as well. Yep. What comments we got, honey? All right, let's see. We'll give everybody a few minutes to get in here. Let's see, uh, Mike asked if our roof leaks. Uh, the roof leaks in the shop. Yes, it does. <laughs> Just a little bit. Now, if you're inquiring because I'm all wet, that's because I was just out in the rain just a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. uh, John Coffey says, how's your jaw doing? Uh, sore. Very sore. Uh, most, the uppers have pretty much healed. Uh, the one on the right's getting there. And the one on the left, I've been having a, a stitch that's really been bugging me and it's like really inflamed and irritated. So, so if I look like I'm talking crooked all night long, that's why. <laughs> uh, Jackson, he said, uh, Jackson Graham, he said, got my tongs today and love them. Have already used them. Awesome, Jackson. Glad you enjoyed those tongs, buddy. For anybody who's been part of the live streams for a while, you know, Jackson got, he won the wolf jaw tongs, so that I made. I'm glad you're getting use out of them there, buddy. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Well, we're good and hot on our metal here. I'm going to give it just another minute. Okay. And uh, talk to everybody, take some questions and stuff. Let everybody get a chance to get funneled in here. Yeah. So, we're uh, got 34 so far. Uh, everybody's uh, kind of saying where they're from. Somebody from Texas, somebody from Argentina. Hey, awesome. Pacific Northwest, W. Casto. All right. <laughs> so, did we have a price on that class, Jessica? Yes, the class is $60. Yep, the class will be 60 bucks. So that'll be an all-day class, and lunch is provided, which is lunch is, when I say lunch, uh, it's a bunch of $5 Little Caesars pizzas. So that's lunch is provided. <laughs> For anybody who's around the Troy, Ohio area, And of course, you get to take the comments, hang out, and spend the day with Roy. Yep. <laughs> that's some people's nightmares, and that's some other people's dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Thomas Urso, how do you do the playback of the videos? Uh, so the playback of the videos is after this video is done, I get to choose whether I want to publish it and make it a public video that can be watched in the future, or I can just delete the video after the live stream's over with. So the public, so the playback of the video is after it's done, I hit the finish, and it renders the video, and I let it, I let YouTube publish it then as a regular video. So that's what I mean by that. Hopefully that answers the question. You want one more question? Or are you ready? Yeah, one, one more question, and then we're going to pound some hot steel. All right. Charles Fahrenholtz asks, have you ever known anyone that's used a brake drum from a semi for a forge? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people who use brake drums out of semis for a forge. Uh, it's really deep, and so you need to build it up. And, uh, yeah, more like calipers, uh, not brake calipers, but like a disc brake drum. Ah, uh, it's not a drum. Can't think of the name of it. <laughs> it'll come back to you. It'll, it'll come back to me. Anyway, somebody knows what I'm talking about. It's for disc brakes. They make a better forge insert and then build a body around those than a semi-brake drum. Rotor. Rotor. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> That's, That's the, right. Thank it's the you. overwhelming consensus. Thank you. Thank you. So, all right. We're going to give a trusty hammer here. And we're going to start on the first part. The first part of this process is just taking, we've already drawn out our reins. We're going to go ahead and work on our, our nibs here. And we're going to set, do our first initial set down and offset here. What that is going to do is that's going to give us something that is approximately quarter inch or six mil by quarter, quarter inch or six mil. And technically this is like three eight, so I don't know, that's, I think that's eight or nine mil there. This is 3 8 inch tall by quarter inch thick. That's what it's going to give us. And that there is approximately 2 inches long or 50 mil. So that's what we're, that's what we're going for. So let's go over to the anvil. All right. All right. You want to get close enough that they can see it? Yeah. That's a little too far out and fish angled there. And go all the way over the edge so, okay. so they can see out there here we go hold on guys we're gonna move you Jessica's being a little too coy with it you're going on a ride we want to get you close for this one there we go hopefully this will be a good angle for you guys So I've got a punch mark in roughly about an inch and a half from the end. And that's where we're going to start our set down. And those are half on, half off close, slowly working forward.
All right. Go ahead and straighten that up a little bit. All right, so that's where we're going to stop with that first heat. It's about as far as we're going to go with it. You can see that center punch mark. Just like so. There we go. The stock size started off of quarter inch by one inch flat stock or six mil by 25 mil. All right. Just got to rotate them. All right, can you guys see me? Hopefully it's not too weird of an angle. There we go. I think they'll, they'll make it. <laughs> Jessica's trying some new angles apparently tonight. <laughs> yeah, make it interesting. Yeah. Um, let's see, to answer your question, Shadowcaster, our start time at seven, we're trying this out because of our kids. Uh, that way they can tr still get to bed at a normal time since grandma has to watch them for a bit in the evening, so that's why we're trying 7 p.m. Eastern time. Yep. More questions, yes. Uh, which tongs are you making? I am making a pair of knife tongs, or pass-through tongs, so you can grip anywhere on the length of a bar stop, like so. Is that in shot? Mm -hmm. You're good. Okay. Let's see, Graham Pepper's asking about the power hammer. Do we want to make that when we're going to use it in a video? Well, that will be coming up very soon. So, right now our thoughts are next Friday night's live stream. We're going to be doing a great unveiling thing of the power hammer. I should hopefully have the plans drawn up for that power hammer and the power hammer trailer video, so to speak, after the live stream will be released where you can go and watch and see it do several different projects. So that's what I'm hoping um, to have done by next Friday. Which, from this angle, they get to see it. Cool. So it's gonna be tempting them all evening uh, it's long. It's gonna tempt them all evening long. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh. All right, we're going to go back to the anvil. We're going to finish this up. Okay. So that's a little more than two inches long. That might be like two and a half or so. That's okay. You just want to keep it roughly the same thickness as the original parent bar stock. have any questions for Roy about this so far? I'll thin that down a little bit more. Alright. That was able to stretch it out fairly close. I'd go a little more with it. So all I'm doing there is I'm just comparing it to the half that I've already made to that point. And so here in the video, if I were to put those two shoulders together, you can see I need to go just a little further. And this one here is just a little heavier than it needs to be. So we're going to refine that up a little more. Questions, Jess? All right. Uh... Cameron asked, how heavy is the hammer? Power hammer? I believe or so. Or hand hammer? You can answer both. Okay. <laughs> hand hammer, one and three quarter pounds. Power hammer, 37 pounds. Let's see. Uh, cake to all. Why not get a gas forge? I have a gas forge That's because right. it's a tool. It's no better than a coal forge, and in fact, it's a lot less handy than a coal forge in a lot of ways. For instance, 
I have a very specific heat on this bar. You can't do that with a gas forge. That's why it works out for this to use coal forge instead. Let's see. Um, as you don't make knives, what do you plan to use the tongs for? Well, they're going to be giveaway tongs. <laughs> so, as I don't make knives. Actually, I do have one. I, I do have one video concept in mind where I have thought about forging a knife and explaining the exact reason why I don't forge knives while forging a knife kind of do an oxymoron kind of thing. All right, we're getting hot again. Okay. Go over here. All right. Up the questions, please. Okay. Let's see. We have a Craig Wright. He says, hey, Roy and Jessica, I'm inspired by the videos. Very informative. And I'm wearing one of the Christ-Centered Ironworks logo shirts I just bought. Just saying, LOL. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for that, by the way. Cameron Sinclair says traditional work is what he likes. I like traditional work as well. When I can do it. Alright, so here's what we got. Hopefully I can hold this where it's not in a weird angle to the camera. So now both those are roughly the same thickness and the same height. Now we're going to put in this offset that's right here. We're going to go ahead and put in that offset and then we'll go ahead and forge the nibs. John Coffee asked if you're going to be at the next meeting, SOFA meeting. I am going to try. The problem with me and meetings is the fact that I'm such a busy guy. So uh, I will most likely do my best to be there as we're going to be announcing the next uh, my workshop and class, so it's always good to put a face with the name that they're announcing. So that is one thing I would like to try to do is be there for that. So usually it's difficult for me to get up there on monthly meetings as I have a lot of stuff going on and I work about six days a week. So what else? Let's see, where do you typically buy your coal from? I buy my coal from Sofa. Which is in Troy, Ohio. Yep, which is in Troy, Ohio. Let's see, Mickey Swift says, why do you not have a electrical blower on your home forge like your other, sorry, like your other forge? The forge that I built for demonstrations it was just a handy way of me making that forge and using the same blower I used for a gas forge burner, a forced air gas forge burner. So I was trying to showcase how you can use the same techniques to build two different products, a gas forge burner and a coal forge. I've got this because my wife has bought it for me at a garage sale a long time ago and I love the hand crank coal forge. I have more control than what I do with a electric blower. You're less likely to accidentally burn something too. Yep, although I burn stuff regularly. <laughs> I'm just less likely to do it with coal. <laughs> Step out. Can I hear a sec? Got a glove. Okay. W. Casto says you need an assistant to crank on that forge for you. <laughs> yeah, I do. They're in short supply. <laughs> Alright, we're ready to take the next heat. Okay. So now we're going to be right here. We're going to be on the far side of the anvil. Just like in other videos, we're going to use half on, half off blows to go ahead and set down that section of the boss and transition it back into our handles. This is the advantage of doing your tong handle reins first. It gives you somewhere to go to. Now we're going to go ahead and dress off this boss area. 
as I've stated in other videos, this isn't necessarily needed. It just makes things look a little cleaner. Alright, after done tapping it and chicken peg it, I end up with something that looks like this. Voila! So now we got those ready there. <laughs> Corey Shire, you'd move to Ohio to be my minion, huh? <laughs> well, I'll keep that in mind. Oh. Uh, so now we are all ready to go ahead and bend the nib portions of these tongs. And this is where the tricky part comes in. Because the way that they have to be and overlap in order to hold the to hold the stock material that you're wanting to work with. So we'll get these hot and we'll do the bend that we're going to do, which is a 90 degree bend down away from the boss. We'll get both these hot and do that now. All right, I'll read off some of you guys' comments here. Let's see. Uh, there's a question for me. How did I learn all the business tricks and tips? I learned them by trial and error. Uh, pretty much I have a love for learning. By the way, this is Jessica talking. Yeah. She's behind the camera. <laughs> yes, I know. Uh, this isn't a glitch. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I love learning. I'm, I'll just read and I'll study up on something as many ways as I can until I have enough information to just uh, try my own hand at it. So I did that on, when I started selling on eBay. I did the same thing on Etsy. You know, they have, uh, they have articles and stuff. And so I just read those and I, you know, just kind of uh, get some books from the library too. And I just give it a try. So that's pretty much how I got all my experience on all the business stuff I've done. <laughs> Let's see, Cody Dixon said, why are you using that weight hand hammer? Using the what? The, that weight hand hammer. So why do you use that weight? This weight hand hammer? Because I can swing it all day, 12 or 14 or 16 hours or whatever I must. That's why I use this weight. I don't use uh, really heavy hammers anymore because they destroyed my wrist. That is what I consider, that's my three pounder. I'll use that if I have a lot of material to move, like one inch stock or so. I'll, I'll try using this for a while, but I can't swing that one all day. One and three quarter pounds, I can swing just fine though, all day long. Shadowcaster says, just brought back four tons of coal yesterday. It was a 20 hour round trip. woo -wee. You did make a trip. All right, we're ready. All right. All right. Now we're going to take approximately an inch or about 25 mil of this material and we're going to bend it straight down at a 90. Nice and straight like. Keep the jaw nice and dressed and everything in plane. Just as simple as that. So we're going to do that to the other one real quick. Got it hot still. Hi, Ella. So we're going an inch for 25 mil. Just want to keep this all nice and in line here. Now you don't have to worry about squaring off this outside corner. You just want the inside corner to be nice and square if you can. 
no particular reason. It just looks like it's a little tidier job. And there's that one. There. M16 with his own hands. Don't know what that is. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. So, so you want this 90 to be exactly away from your boss. So it steps down and it turns down, just like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bend this then to actually make the part that's going to grip our knife blade. And for that, we'll go over to the vise. All right, more questions, Jess. All right. Start talking away. The Provo Pirate says, I have heard that if your item doesn't sell, you should raise the price. Is that true? Only in, circum only in certain circumstances. So the theory behind that is that is not a rule of thumb. That's not a rule of thumb. The theory behind that is that you might be pricing to a lower demographic of people. So, for instance, People who only make $20,000 a year, they're not going to spend half their annual income on a piece of ironwork from you. You have to find the people, if you got a $10,000 piece of ironwork, say it's a gate or a railing that you're trying to sell, you're not going to sell it to somebody who only makes $20,000 a year, or $30,000 a year, or $60,000 a year, or $100,000 a year. You're going to have to probably find someone where you can sell that where it is such a low percentage of their income a year that it just makes sense to them. Same way uh, if you do craft shows versus art shows. Art shows, people are there for high-end art. So if you're selling a craft show-like item for, say, $12, but they're there and they have the mind to spend $50 on a piece of art, a work of art, they look down their nose at your $12. Now, if you mark that appropriately to the venue that you're at, so say $50 in that particular case, that person's going to buy something from you for $50 that you would have normally have sold for $12 at a different venue. But that's kind of the thought process behind that. And that's true when you're doing that on an online market space. If you go to... Uh, if you go anywhere online, you got to remember that you're dealing with 7.3 billion people on this planet. You aren't dealing with just people you know who tell you your stuff's not that good. I try to encourage guys this all the time. So if something that you're, uh, a certain area that you're trying to sell something in, and people aren't buying it, and you think it's cheap enough, and people aren't buying it, yeah, raise your prices and go to that next tier of people, essentially. What else? Corey Shire says, Roy, are you a fan of the rounding hammer? I am not a fan of the rounding hammer. He has a whole video on it, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> I, got a whole, I got a whole video on it. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and say it in the live stream because I'm going to get asked this a lot. Uh, and I take some knocks for it. Use a hammer that you're comfortable with. If you enjoy a rounding hammer, use a rounding hammer by all means. But if you feel that a rounding hammer is so far superior than any other type of hammer out there, you're dead wrong. Because there are certain jobs a rounding hammer just cannot do, won't do, and will not do effectively. And it's by its design. It's by its design. Rounding hammers came from turning hammers, from the farrier industry. And so the, that's where I'll take and leave that little rant there. But there's a popularization of a rounding hammer right now, just like if anybody remembered about five or six years ago, there was a real popularization of the Hoffy hammer. That was a fad. The rounding hammer's a fad. They come and go in popularity. Before you know it, who knows, it'll be the ball peen hammer. Somebody will be swearing up and down that it's the best and only tool you need in your toolbox. But I'm a man who likes my tools. And I like to have plenty of tools to do specific work that I need to have done. Answer the question? 
Yep. That's what I did. All right, that does it. I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just putting it out there. All right. Are we moving to the vice yeah. now? Okay. Now we're going to move the vice. You got any more questions? Uh, maybe just a recap so far for the people just coming in. Okay, for everybody who's just coming in, we are forging a pair of knife tongs. That's what we're forging. No, I don't make knives. I'm just making the tongs so I can give them away to somebody. Um, so the portion we've already completed is the offset portion. And we're getting ready to bend the nibs now that will hold eventually hold the piece. Yep. Does that make sense? Yep, that makes sense. Okay, just move it right over there. And we'll no, we have not done the giveaway yet. Nope, we haven't done the giveaway yet. So you're still in time. <laughs> is this angle work? Uh, or is that because needs to be off to the yeah. side here? Hold on, guys. we we'll get you around here so you can actually see. All right, so here we are. What we're going to do is we're going to lock this with that 90 degree bend sticking straight up and we're going to bend it over that end of the vise there. So essentially, we bent one inch of the material down. Now we're going to grab it at approximately right dead even here with that offset. And now we're going to bend that right on around just like so so you can see where the bend starts right there we want it to be nice and flush with the top hopefully everybody can see that okay there we go so that's what we got so far don't worry about closing this up just yet. We'll do that when we fit the tongs. So let me grab the other piece. Alright. Now, now here's where the tricky part comes in. We are going to bend this the opposite direction. This is different than like what you do most tongs. We're going to want this to bend the opposite direction and the reason for that being is one has to offset over and come back if you bend them both the same direction if you bend them both the same direction say left and left what you would end up having is when you flip this you would have one hook on one side and one hook on the other side and so if I bring this other one back and show it to you now Okay. If I would have been on both the same direction, you would have ended up with something that looked like that. But since I've been at the opposite direction, now when the tongs get flipped over and paired, they're both on the correct side. Hopefully everybody has got that. Does anybody got any questions on that? Hopefully I'm making sense. See, no questions on that yet. Um, Kyle Dudlison asked how to enter the giveaway. Okay, so the giveaway tonight has already been entered in by the last live tongue demo. I will be telling the secret password that you have to say on the playback of this video here later on in this video to be able to win the knife making tongs in the next live stream. All right. All right, over there. Okay, I need to let those cool a little bit so I can, I'll answer some questions guys while I let these cool down a little bit so I can drill them. I'm just gonna take the easy route tonight versus punching them both. Just to save time. All right, we have, let's see, we had a question about Charles Walker. He says, I have a small blacksmithing school north of Houston. Would you mind if I put your YouTube address in the manual I give to my new students? Nope, sure, go ahead. I greatly appreciate that. So, any exposure is good exposure, except for bad exposure. <laughs> and, well, there's one other type of exposure, but we can't talk about that on YouTube. 
Let's see, right. on the topic of pricing your work, we had, let's see, someone said, I have done service work for people who like Roy, who is like Roy is talking about. Folks that yep. spend money on gates and stuff will spend $10,000 on lights just to put on their custom fence. Yep. So, so like it or not, like it or not, there are social classes of people. You would think that would have died out back in the Victorian period, and we like to pretend it doesn't exist now with all the equality and stuff and jargon going around. But unfortunately, it still exists. There's financial social classes out there. And, you know, you'll find this if you ever start running your own business, that there's just certain people that no matter, you could give it to them for $3, and they would still be unhappy and say it was too much. And... You know, and then there's other people that spending three thousand dollars is like buying a Big Mac for them. You know, and so depending on what your ironwork is, how good you are, and what you're needing to make, and what your vision and your goal, and the amount of value you're trying to provide to that customer, and or to a customer base. You have to take and pick those type customers that are going to most reflect what your hopes and goals are for your business. And so things doing, things like, uh, you know, clients, like I said, that'll spend five, ten thousand dollars on a gate or a railing, you know, they, they usually make more money than most people see in a lifetime, uh, especially around the Dayton, Ohio area. So. So that's why I'm online, by the way, quite a bit, because in my area, there's not that group of people. I live in a little small farming community. Incomes aren't real high. There might be a handful of millionaires in the whole Bloom State. And so that's why, you know, I go online to take and find those people that are willing to buy my ironwork. What else we got? We got Mickey Swift. He says, how much coal do you suggest buying to start out with? Um, if it's a new supply of coal that you've never tried out before, I suggest no more than 50 pounds. Uh, if it's a good, reliable source of coal and you know that it heats well, things like that, as much as you plan on smithing. So if you plan on smithing maybe four hours every night, or maybe, let's say maybe 20 hours a week, you plan on smithing, you should get, you should get in roughly probably about 500 pounds of coal a month. Now that sounds like a lot, but I'm assuming if you're just getting started, you're going to be burning a lot of it needlessly. So that's why the number is overestimated. Plus you don't want to run out and say, well, can't work on any projects till next month when I can get another load of coal. You always want to have a little overlap. More questions? Yes. Uh, Zach Grogan says, Roy, you remind me of my high school shop teacher. Uh-oh. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I can't smile too much, guys. I wish I could. Yeah. That that pulls on that stitch, <laughs> unfortunately. Oh. I'm going to step over here and go ahead and drill this real quick. Okay. Jessica can talk to you for a little bit and get in front of the camera. Oh, boy. Uh, I'll have to readjust Tell about first. her day. Yeah. Actually, um, I'll ask you guys a question. A lot of you guys have asked about the coal swab. This was like our second live stream back. So I was curious if any of you have decided to make yourselves a coal, coal swab, and if you have, what you think of it. Oh, wow. My shop is a pigsty. Yeah, coal swab. Okay, so you haven't heard of it, W. Casto. Um, what it is... It is a thing that Roy uses instead of a dipper can uh, to keep the forge fire under control. Since dipper can can pour out too much water and crack the fire pot. Show them what it yeah. is. Yeah, okay, um, all right. I'll get over there. I'll demonstrate for you. Yep. This is the coal swab. Um, it's just a rag. This has like a hook on the end of it. And then he just puts it in the water and then he can use it to go around his fire like this. And it helps keep it under control. You can pour them over this way if they want. 
Okay, so they have something to look at. <laughs> Cody, you just used your hand. I suppose that would work too. That way you don't run the risk of dumping out too much. What's that? I was just talking to one of them. Yeah, that was actually, um, Roy did that video probably back in March. So if you want to find it, probably the easiest way is just to do a YouTube search. Type in Coal Swab Price Centered Ironworks and it should come up. Uh, Mickey, you're asking where you can buy plans for the power hammer? Uh, I can't so hear anybody over here. You're fine. Um, yes, if you want to get some of the plans that we have currently, you go to blacksmithpdfs.com right. and you can get some of our power hammer plans there. The ones we have up so far is our original cam hammer design. We also have the revisited cam hammer design and the hardy hammer, uh, along with some other tools. But once we have the beam hammer, which you see behind Roy there, um, when we have that ready, it will be up live on blacksmithpdfs.com. And like the download price is going to be $3.99, I believe. So less than four bucks. Uh, that way it can be an e economical option for all you guys and gals out there. Sorry, everyone, for not having this ready to go already today, but that's how it works when you get busy. All right, flip this around, huh? All right. All right. Everybody see okay? They need to be looking at the anvil, not my okay. face. Okay. All righty. All right. Hopefully everybody can see okay. So, so I just drilled this to save time. Uh, most people probably didn't see it. If you did see it over there, as I was being very elusive to what I was doing, I essentially I center punch marked this. I drilled one half. I laid it over on the other half to see which, say it was this one, I laid it over on the other half to see where everything was going to line up right, brought the drill bit down and just touched it to the surface of the one laying underneath, and then drilled on through. That way, when I come and I put all this together, all my jaws and everything are nice and lined up, all in one deal. Can that be seen real well? Yep, that's good and clear. Okay. Uh, Cody, or sorry, Corey had a question. He said, "Roy, I didn't see. Good, Corey. I didn't. Sorry. Let's see. Why wasn't one of the nibs longer to reach around like you were talking about? Uh, in this case, you can see this nib's just a little longer. This nib here is actually just a little longer. In the video that I did on this, one of them just came out just a little longer by default. So what I was saying was, is whichever one was the longest jaw, since you're going to lose just a little bit of material by bending that over and uh, lining it with the opposite jaw, that's what you want to take and do is be able to make that your one that's going to bend over, the longest one. If, if they're both exactly the same length, don't worry about it. Uh, Cody Dixon, what size stock was that? Uh, the tongs in general. Mm -hmm. The tongs started off as an 8 inch long piece. Uh, help me, I'm forgetting, hold on, I think that's 400 mil. I don't know. 8 inches long by 1 inches wide by quarter inch thick. If Gra Graham, if you're watching, you'll have to shout it out in the comments if Roy got it mixed up. Yeah, what my calculation is there. I'm not fully on my A game here, but... Oh. Alright, so I'm going to move on to the next step, unless there's any other questions about this step. I'll give it a second. I'm trying to be as speedy as possible, because we have quite a bit to go through today. Whew. Get my shirt tucked down here. 10 millimeter by 200 millimeter, says Graham. 10 by 200, man, I'm way off. By 25 millimeter. By 25 <laughs> millimeter. That's for quarter inch thick. I thought quarter inch thick was six mil. I'm not arguing with somebody from across the pond, but I thought it was six mil for quarter inch. I guess you'll have to reference your materials. All right. 
getting a little cold in here. It is. I'll put back on my sweater for a moment. He says could be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's coming to this world. So, all right. So just like in the other video, tong making video that I've done, if no one has seen all my videos on making tongs, there's a lot of good information there. I suggest you go and watch previous videos. But So this is going to be repetitive for guys who already know this process. But essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold these two tongs together. And I'm going to use my rivet set, my rivet block that I made in another video, and my rivet set on top to form a nice domed rivet on both sides. I'm using this to back it up, and I'm going to set this cold first. Just like that. I'm not going to go real far with it. I'm just trying to set that in nice and cold so this way it holds my two halves together. I use the bottom block to protect this rivet from being crushed. So it sits in that depression while I hammer that down to start it. When I bring this out hot, I will then use oh excuse me, I will then use my rivet set to be able to set that head down and make it domed like this one or almost so. This rivet actually needs to be just a fuzz longer in order for it to produce a rivet head like so. But we're pushing it to its limits here. Any questions? Yeah, and if I forgot to read anybody's comments, um, make sure you say them again too so I can get them out there for Roy. Yep. Several people said the coal swab looks more like a barbecue mop. <laughs> Some people swab as other people's barbecue mops. I, I don't judge. I don't judge. All right, we'll go stick these in the fire and get them hot. Okay. All right, questions, Jess? Yes. Okay, uh, Belly, Belly Strong says, still building my forge, and he plans on using a coal swab. Awesome. I find it very handy for operations like just right here what I'm doing. Maybe you can turn them around. Okay. So you can see what I'm so doing. You're not just staring at the anvil. Change of scenery. So we're just so I like using the coal swab for this right here. You set it right on these handles of these tongs or any bar stock like this, and it acts as a heat sink. So it stops the heat from radiating up the, the bar stock as bad. So I like it for that purpose there. By the way, can everyone hear us okay? Hopefully everybody can hear us just fine and picture quality good. Yep. Okay. Uncle Buck's Forge said he went to our playlist and watched the video on the swab this morning because he has plans on making one. Awesome, Uncle Buck's Forge. I'd love to take and see it. I, I'd like to see a video on that. If anybody doesn't know, uh, Uncle Buck's Forge, he has a YouTube channel as well, and he's been putting out some fairly consistent content uh, here late. I'm a subscriber over there. You may check him out and see if you like his content over there. But, uh, uh, yeah, I'd like to see a video posted on the coal swab. <laughs> Maybe anybody who has a YouTube channel that wants to post a video on coal swab, that would be neat. Just give me the link. Shoot me the link at my Gmail. Yeah. And I'll add them to a playlist. How about that? Yeah. And as part of the conversation, if you have a YouTube channel, you know, just go ahead and you can shout it out right now and uh, tell everybody what your channel is about. Yeah. Let's see. We did have a question. David L. Hader Jr. says, what kind of anvil is that? Okay. My anvil is a, what I believe is a petting hoss anvil. And I believe it's a North German anvil. Now I'll say I believe because I'm not a thousand percent sure on anvil makes and models. This is what I was told that it was when I purchased it. And it looks very similar to Petting Haas anvils. And her name's Olga. <laughs> it is Olga. Since the day you saw her, huh? Yep. <laughs> 
Let's see, Graham says, I have to go do some stuff, Roy. Tell me when I win by email. <laughs> <laughs> Graham, you're going to have to come back and watch this on the playback. Because that's how it works. You have to get with me within 48 hours if you win something. Mm. Uh, Mickey Swift, how many times have you smashed your thumb forging? Uh, not too many times forging, actually. Smashing my thumb. Now, hitting my own hand, I've done that quite a bit, uh, or wrist, when holding a punch or a tool, and uh, that never ends well. Let's see, uh, they ask, what kind of hammer is on your anvil? The hammer that is on my anvil is a soft face hammer. You can find the video where I forged this. So all this is is a big chunk of mild steel that I use to take and hit my punches and drifts and things like that. So I mar more of this tool and I don't have to keep redressing these tools. I learned that from Tom Latinay and it works pretty good for me. Mark S. Too many people forging knives, but I don't see a lot of Roman broadheads. Roman broadheads. I believe he is referring to arrowheads. Oh, arrowheads. Mm. Yep. That's one thing you can do. I'm not really into weaponry so much. Pretty stuff. <laughs> Pretty stuff. Things that I can make and sell to the lady of the house. Or to the fella of the house that just happens to have those type whims of liking pretty things like I do. Mm -hmm. All right. Should we move? Ready? To yep. All right, we're ready to head this rivet up. Hopefully, you're ready. Sure. Are they in? Everything in shot? Everything look good? In shot. Okay. All right. So we're just going to set this on the bottom block, set that on top, and just give it a good solid pop. Make sure it's on the bottom, right where it needs to be, and we're just going to drive that down. Now as you hit this, you're going to find this leg wants to pop up. It's just because of the way the kinetic energy flows. So you'll have to bump it down every now and then. All right, that's been headed there. Let's come down. Ah, dropped it. If this was Alex Steele's channel, everybody would take a drink. And since it's Roy's channel, I don't know what you're going to do, but enjoy the show, I guess. Laugh at me furiously. All right. So there we go. We've got that all headed up there. And since I had to adjust it already, that'll stop that a little bit there, but I had to hit this leg down a little bit to line it up. But that's the wrong leg. So that needs to be straightened back out because we want this to pass by this rivet head here. So it's this leg here that we're after that we want to heat up this area again and just bend it over slightly. Put about a 45 degree kink in it. Well, not really a 45 degree. I mean, it's less than that. It's just, you'll see in a second. Okay. <laughs> Easier right. shown than explained. Easier shown than explained. All right. Questions? Yes. Billy asked what you did before being a blacksmith. What I did before being a blacksmith was heating and air conditioning. I did that for, well, I even did it a little bit while I was blacksmithing, so about eight years. Before I finally decided I wasn't doing it any longer. Period. End of story. That kind of thing. Yeah, so basically he's still sweating, even before he was a blacksmith. Yep. I pretty much only ever worked physical trades. And before that, when I was like third, well, younger than that, pretty much I worked my entire life. So, 
younger even than that, when I was 13, I did from 13 to the age of 15, I did nothing but landscaping. Every summer, worked nothing but landscaping jobs, and then during the winter, I would cut and split firewood. Uh, so, always been a worker. Uncle Buck Sports says, my wife and I went on vacation last week. We went to Mystic Seaport. You would have loved to seen all that wrought iron chain and anchors sitting around. Oh, I'm sure I would have. That sounds like a neat. That sounds like a neat trip. Paul's garage says hi. Hey, Paul. Good to have you here. I enjoyed your video today, by the way, buddy. That was a funny one on the banana hanger. <laughs> I enjoyed that. That was good. All right. We are ready to adjust these. Okay. Can I go to the vice? Any questions? Yes. Um, Roy, if you were to make these tongs without doing the video and explaining as you go, how long would it take you to make them? Um, let's see here. It took me approximately 20 minutes to draw out. Well, not even that. It, it took me about 10 minutes to draw out the reins under the power hammer. So you could figure by hand about 30 minutes or so. It should be about 15, 20 minutes to pair, so say maybe 40 minutes, or allot yourself an hour for the reins. And then uh, to do the nibs and stuff, if I didn't have to explain, I think I made the whole thing in under 30 minutes, 30, 35 minutes, using the power hammer, and uh, then going to the anvil. That took about 30, 35 minutes. All right, we're going to go over the anvil real quick. These okay. are hot. All right, now we need to move this jaw over to meet this jaw. All we're going to do is set this down on the anvil like so. Hit it down in that direction and then make sure it sits on the edge of the anvil and bump it back. Just like so. And that's how you put the little offset in there. There's really nothing to it but to do it. So there we have it. So now the next portion here, while they're still nice and toasty, we are going to try to set, and I actually might just go ahead and take another heat at this, but now we can start figuring out how these need to be set in here so this way this sits nicely. And this will actually grip our stock. Questions, hon? Yes. Any um, questions? Hold on, my fingers having trouble with the screen here. Let's see. Mm -hmm. W. Castro says, Thank very nice. Thank you again for taking the time to explain and share your craft. It helps newcomers out tremendously, hopefully keeping the majority of bad habits from forming. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> if they watch my channel long enough, they might see a lot of my bad habits. So, <laughs> I don't know if I'm that good, but... <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate the compliment. Thank you very much for being part of the channel as well. So, I hope everybody can see this okay. So, let's see here. Get out of the light. So you guys can see the little bit of an offset in that there. Coming over. to Just lining up those jaws. So now the process is to heat these up again and adjust them to hold our stock adjust our jaws to hold our stock and then these will be done. Questions, yes. Yeah, um, <laughs> we talk about Uncle Buck's forge, his vacation he went on. Paul Scrod said when he's been there before and they were restoring a wooden whaling ship when he was there. Really? And he thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, when we took our trip to Maine, uh, they had, what do they call those things? They, a sooner or a schooner, I think it was. Yeah. Anyways, it had like three or four masts on it, like big old sail sailing ship. Never seen anything like it in person. Uh, I'm not a seafaring person, so I probably won't see anything like it ever again unless Jessica says, "Honey, you need to take me somewhere special." Oh, mm -hmm. reset my. Got one of these factory, I got one of those factory uh, wedges in there that likes to keep slipping out. Hand forge wedges are better. 
Zach Grogan says that he is a park ranger and he gets to do blacksmithing demos. Hey, hey that works out great. Government employed blacksmith. Can't beat that. So I'm going to use a little piece of scrap here. Something I've used in another video. This is one inch material by quarter inch thick. Or if Graham was still around, it would be 10 mil, possibly 6 mil, <laughs> by 25 mil. <laughs> oh. uh, you can use anything, any length of bar. You can grip it to whatever size stock at this point. You're just trying to adjust the jaws. So, but since it's a pair of giveaway tongs, you all don't get a choice. I'm just giving it away. So, No options. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going on the ammo. Ready to go? Yep. Ready? Okay. So everything you do from now on out requires just a level of finesse. You're not trying to beat on this thing like crazy, you know. You're just trying to finesse everything together here at this point. You know, so just take your time. I'm going to fold that jaw down on there. We're going to fold that jaw down onto it as well. Just like so. Tighten those up. So just remember, right now you're just finessing everything. You're just trying to get stuff to bend. You're not really trying to force anything or forge anything. You're just trying to get stuff set closer together. So this way you can actually pick up your intended piece. Like so. Did you catch all that? I think they did. They've oh. been listening attentively. Hopefully everybody's been listening. They ask how many, <laughs> Billy says, how many times have you touched hot metal when demonstrating? Uh, plenty of times. Yeah, so, his finger always comes really close. Like that, I can't feel the heat from that. So, it's very hard for me to register it unless my skin's smoking. So, that will hold that piece just fine. And the way that these are, these are pass-throughs. Hopefully I'm not screaming at you. But So this way you can grab a piece of bar stock at any length on its juncture. Now before these were ever called knife makers tongs, they were called pass-through tongs. So I don't know when knife makers picked them up and started claiming them as their own, but they did and so here we are. <laughs> so those are done, hun. All right. Record time, right? Hour and three minutes. Hour and three minutes. Awesome, awesome. Even faster than scrolling songs last week. Oh, you know what I almost forgot? To announce our... Nope. No. No. I almost forgot to put in my touch mark. Mm, can't forget that. How's anybody going to know who, who made these? Mm -hmm. Without my touch mark. Damas oh. Damascus Knife says he could use them. <laughs> I think I'm going to be getting that a lot here. <laughs> yeah, here shortly, I bet. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and set up my touch mark here. Put that right in the reins. Voila. Very nice. All right. Mike says those are very good tongs. I'm glad everybody likes these tongs. So these will be being given away in the next live stream when we do the next tong giveaway, which will be next Friday's live stream. We'll be giving away these pair of tongs in the secret passcode that you need to take and use. What's a good one, Jess? What should uh, we go with? Let's see. Let's put it to the... What should we say, guys? What should we say? What should be the slogan for these? Knifey, knifey. <laughs> Knife makers are weird. Should I make you guys get all uncomfortable? <laughs> to be like, why is everybody saying that in the comments of the video? <laughs> oh, Big Dog Forge is in here. He says hi. Hey, Tim. Good to have you here. We just finished up these tongs. Hopefully you got to see some of it. 
Let's see, we got some uh, catchphrases here possible. Okay, let's hear them. One, Brian Neely says, I don't make knives. Yes. <laughs> that one sounds good. Uh, go, let's let's okay, hear okay. the rest. I'm going to hear the rest out. Jackson Graham says, Bob's uncle. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Robin Borowski says, get a grip on it. Get a grip on it. Yep, Billy Strong seconds, I don't make knives. Damascus Knife says, no arguments here. <laughs> Cody Dixon says, bladesmiths. <laughs> and Ronnie Strong also says, I don't make knives. That's All right, well, I think we're going to go with, one. I don't make knives. Yep, there's a fourth vote for that. So There you go. We're going to go with that as the slogan. So what you have to do to win these in the next live stream or to be entered in the running to win these is comment after this video has been published when the live stream is over when it's been published I don't make knives and then we will enter you in the drawing for these knife making tongs which is a complete oxymoron it's great <laughs> Cody Dixon says I do make knives I know I but know you'll have to say you don't to be but, but you'll have to say you don't <laughs> You can do, you can do, if, if if you feel like it's lying to yourself and your sensibilities, you can say hashtag Roy Adams behind <laughs> it, if you feel like it's a lie. But. <laughs> By the way, Big Dog Forge said, I watched the whole thing, just didn't want to interrupt. Hey, awesome, awesome, Tim. Oh, how'd I do? Did I do okay? Not bad for a guy who had wisdom teeth surgery, huh? <laughs> yep, just a week ago. Yeah, just a week ago. Let's see. There was a question about the ratio of hammer to anvil. So why you can use a smaller hammer when you have a larger anvil. Okay, ratio to... Um, maybe you can point it up here at me yep. so we can stop looking at those tongs. Yep. Point it up here. Somewhere. Somewhere. In I raise space. it up there. there All right, am I in the shot? You're in shot now. Okay, raise it up. Okay, so we're going to set these off to the side to cool someplace here on this tong rack. Um, so hammer to anvil ratio, that is, that is a good one. I, there's a lot of different ratios out there. Some guys will just use simple math, 10 to 1, whatever that ratio. You know, if you got a one pound hammer, you can hammer on a 10 pound anvil, so to speak. Uh, I find power hammer ratios are supposed to be around 8 to 1, so it's 8 times the amount of the power hammer ram, although they do tend to run heavier than that, the anvil bases themselves. I think that's more or less to keep the hammer in place and put, and to absorb all the kinetic energy that's coming down. So when you're working on a 465 pound anvil, I'm not going to be hammering with a 46 and a half pound mm -hmm. hammer. That's not going to happen. And so the, it goes completely out the window. The only time that the ratio matters is when you're working with a very small anvil. So say you have, uh, say you have a 20 pound anvil, uh, two pounds of hammer is probably going to max that thing out. And, and that's more than I would want to take and forge on it with, I would probably even consider something more like a one pound hammer. So I don't know what that'd be. It'd be what, 20 to one mm -hmm. ratio for something of that size. My, I, the way I go with it is if, you know, it looks goofy, it probably is. Uh, let's see here. I got a little small section of rail track here. So if you got something like this that you're smithing on, but then you're, you know, you got a buddy coming over and He's going to strike for you. This looks weird. I wouldn't do that there. This looks really weird. Yeah, I don't think that would work out too well. I wouldn't say that that would work very well in the smithing operation. Mm -hmm. um, consequently, that's well, that's a 12 pounder. Here's a six pounder. Once again, still just looks weird. I, I, you know, it, it's not a good ratio as far as size wise. When you get into the larger anvils, and I'm talking 100 plus pounds, so 150 pounds and up, the ratios go out the, 
the window because I don't care if you hit it with an 8 pound sledge or 10 or 20 pound sledge, uh, the ratio is out the window by then. You're not going to damage the anvil in any way. Hopefully that makes sense. And you're not getting any additional mechanical advantage. Would you like to flip the camera around so you can read the comments through a little faster? Uh, yeah, we can do that. Yep. Were you tired of reading them? Uh, no, I just... All right. Yeah, a little so I'm going to come around and I'll flip this camera around here. All right, let's go. Woo. There's Jessica. Sorry. Over light saturation. I'll flip it around. There we are. Now you get to see my ugly mug again. I'm going to raise you up here, guys. Sorry, this is live. Normally I would edit some stuff like this out. I'm going to take that harsh light off of us there. Yeah. Makes us look really bright. I didn't know how much adjustment you could do. All right. Everybody there? So, uh, I just got my touch mark. I'm going to go under the camera here for a second. I got my touch mark on eBay. So, no one made my touch mark. It's just an impression art stamp. Can they see okay? Yeah. Um, so, sorry, we're wobbling you around here, folks. All right. Do, 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 do. Boom. I think we're in good shot there. Okay, yeah, that's where it calls us over by you. You can leave it there. Okay, ratio for hardy hammer. That's a good one. So in that in the plans for the hardy hammer, I gave we can step back here. Okay. I gave my ratio there and essentially I designed that for no less than a hundred pound anvil. Yeah, the anvil to hammer ratio is fifty to one. I think that's just I think that's out there. Once again, it's personal preference. Uh, I'm sure there was probably some old engineer somewhere that decided it, it should be a certain amount, and then just that's what everybody fed on. But, um, you know, my power hammer, the old wooden beam hammer, the wooden beam hammer I've got, there's no way I would ever make it with a 50 to 1 ratio. I mean, um, that's not going to happen. Most treadle hammers aren't 50 to 1 ratios. In fact, most manufactured hammers, uh, like all the ones you see, like Big Blue, uh, a Kenyan style, any of the modern manufacturers of power hammers don't do 50 to 1 ratios with their anvils. Uh, that's just, that's, that's, that's out there. I mean, if, if you think about that, uh, what is that when you have a, you know, a 100 pound hammer? Jessica, math, go. It has to be 50 times more. Yeah, 50 times more for a 100 pound ram. Well, 50 times 100, be 5,000 pounds. Yeah. I don't see anybody having a 5,000 pound block of steel under a 50 pound little giant, so. <laughs> surprise math quiz. We'll probably yeah. fail. Yeah, surprise math quiz, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. Uh, domestic size, have an old 115 pound Peter Wright for use on her carried it lumpy, which is more important. Flat face or hard face? Uh, in my opinion, what's more important is a nice flat face uh, because more times than not, you're trying to straighten something. And if you're working on a wonky anvil, how are you going to make iron work that's not wonky? That's just the, you know, yeah. if you're trying to straighten a blade that's got a twist in it, but you got an anvil that's got a weird twist in it, then you've got to know how to work with that anvil in order to get that blade flat or whatever. And so that's where you know a, a nice flat surface is great. But a lot of guys can't get that right off the gate when you're first getting started. I know my anvil, it had a sway in the back of it. That came in handy when I was trying to straighten stuff because I'd put it over that depression and then give it a bop and I could get it somewhat straighter than I would if you just hammer it on a flat surface. But there's ways of hammering against a flat surface to make stuff flat. And it's just by not forging the material. Well, that's a whole other subject and another point. So, All right. So we're going to go ahead and do the giveaway now for all the people that's been sticking around for the, um, for the giveaway. But before we do that, we're going to put another shameless plug in here for the workshop for everybody that's coming up. I will be teaching this workshop right here of making a candle holder. Uh, what is it, November 11th? Yes, November 11th. November 11th. 
at uh, the Blacksmith Club in Troy, Ohio, sofablacksmiths.org. You can find the information there. And you can also find it over on our Facebook page. Yeah. Yep. You can find all the information there. The class cost is $60. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be 60 bucks, and lunch is included. Plus, you get to hang out with me for the day. That's right. So, <laughs> so that's a... Uh, one of the things, so now we're going to go ahead and give away. Oh, also um, the power hammer. We should make an announcement for anybody who missed that. Oh, yeah. Okay, so for anybody who's missed it, next live stream, we are going to be doing a uh, couple hour event prior to. Uh, I'll be probably forging tongs of some sort, something of that Several nature. Several projects, actually. Several okay. projects, or who, who knows what it is. But Friday, next Friday, this upcoming one. Right? Yep. We are going to be doing the big unveiling of the beam hammer. So mm -hmm. we've got some really cool stuff. We've got some shirts mm -hmm. uh, that that will be available for it. Uh, some new shirts, you know, for Teespring, which is going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, and then we're going to be giving away the knife tongs. So it's going to be a big event, yep. you know, next yep. Friday. So make sure you share it around. Yeah, it'll probably be titled like Countdown Party or something like that. Yep. Yep, it's going to be countdown party at Corey Moore's. It's a trap. Don't nobody pay any mind to that guy. He's he's a friend of mine, so and I he likes to give me a hard time on there. But yeah, so we're going so we're going to do uh, Greg Brown. Good to have you here. Uh, if you just join us, we're you can watch all this on the replay. What we're doing? Oh, yeah, but I don't make knives. Yeah, I like that big dog forge. So. Um, we are going to be giving away the knife making tongs that I just made in this video next Friday. We will be doing a countdown to the big unveiling of the beam hammer. We will also have a lot of uh, you know good information on t-shirts. I've got some t-shirts coming. Mm -hmm. That'll be very neat. That are kind of centered around the beam hammer mm -hmm. and uh, also my slogan wanting to be authentic, so to speak. So it's it's a little t-shirt design we worked on, so I hope that that'll work good. Uh, to win the knife making tongs, you have to comment in the comment thread after this video is over when it has been fully processed, so on the playback. So when it's been published to YouTube as a video, you need to come back to the comment section and comment, I don't make knives. So, and like I said, if you feel that that's a lie or something like that, you can just put hashtag Roy Adams. Yeah. You know, or something like that quote Make behind it. Look it looks like it's Roy's yeah. quote. And the reason why we say that is because we cannot access the live comment section after the video is over with. So if you say it in the live comment section, but you don't say it in the playback section, we don't get your name and it doesn't get into the hat. But let's go ahead and give away the scrolling tongs now while we got everybody here. Oh. <laughs> oh, a little uh, snack bar. It is my wife, not my girlfriend, yep. but appreciate that. Ten years together. Uh, ten years together. And you're right. She is a very good looking woman. I'm a lucky man. So, all right. We're going to give away the scrolling tongs that everybody commented in the last video. Jessica? Yeah. Yes, okay. there are names in here. Okay, this time I just sliced them, guys. I didn't bolt them all, but... Yeah, we just sliced them up. We're going to give this random. All right, look up here. Okay, Can't look no, at it. Can't look, look at it. Okay. Dig in there. All right, I grabbed one, I think. Dig in there. My fingers are right. numb. Oh, I grabbed two. Hang on. Got to read all. <laughs> Sorry, two. whoever you were. My fingers are numb here. All right. Okay. Uh, JG Clark 45. All right, let's get that oh, up there. It's going to be backwards, but... It's yeah, J.G. Clark 45, whoever yep. that is. So, Yep, so oh. you can contact us either on Facebook, Christ Center and Ironworks, or our website, blacksmithpdfs.com. In the upper right-hand corner, there's a contact button, and you can yep. send us a message. Yep. And, and you've got 48 hours to do that. Otherwise, these might be offered again in the next live stream. So, <laughs> you know, so they're up for grabs if you don't claim them. So, so J.G. 45. Congratulations, JG Clark, 45. Congratulations on winning these scrolling tongs there, buddy. So, like I said, get in touch with us. Um, what other news do we have? we have anything else um, we want to talk about? Let's see. 
Not that I can think about this moment. <laughs> Asked you too quickly. Yeah. Oh. All right. Did everybody enjoy the demo this evening? I hope you did. Uh, we'll wait for some comments on that. Hopefully everybody enjoyed this. <laughs> Woo -hoo, that's not me. Yeah, sorry. Watching a lot of Forged and Fire. Yeah, um, Forged and Fire, that's an interesting show. It's bringing a lot of people to the craft. That's a good thing. So. Yeah, uh, if you're brand new and you don't have any tools at all, there's yep. a few things you can actually make with very little. Yep. Um, and we, we've got a ton of videos on the channel for beginners of all types. So, yeah, one of the um, first ones we did was Earth and Forge. And so, like, you can actually do this out in your yep. yard. You don't have to have a building or anything. And you could just be forging out in your yard practically. So, yep. We'll do Big Dog Forge. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Out there, appreciate that. I'm glad you enjoyed this st the stream. Aaron Skelton, <laughs> start <laughs> over, please. Uh, uh, you, can watch it, you can watch it on the replay, <laughs> so. Sarah. You're very welcome, John Colley. So, you know, I, I enjoy teaching. We both have hearts of teachers. That's what we enjoy doing. We appreciate everybody out there. It's been kind of a wild journey this year on YouTube. You know, we never thought it would get as big as we have yeah. in this short amount of time. We are actually approaching 10,000 subscribers very quickly. Mm -hmm. We are at 9,600 and some currently. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know because I can't look at my phone. <laughs> um, but I will be doing a giveaway once we get to 10,000 subs. So I'm going to do a whole special event there and a thank you event uh, mm -hmm. for everybody out there. And so I've got some cool things planned for that. Uh, I, I don't, I haven't done a whole lot of shout outs for uh, subscriber milestones or anything like that. Uh, but, you know, mm -hmm. I do enjoy... I do enjoy giving away stuff and helping guys out, new guys, and Jackson Graham, I'm glad you enjoyed that, mm -hmm. uh, those tongs there, Sierra. <laughs> yeah, you might learn a lot more if Jessica <laughs> made tongs. We might do that one uh, live stream. Yeah, then you You're guys will there. know if I've pay been paying oh. attention or not. <laughs> I, I gotta remember, I can't smile that great. Yeah, so. yeah. Let me see here, let me find my... So I got a little... Hunks of metal. Yeah, so I got a little hunk of metal here. This is an upcoming project. This is going to be a forge welded up hammer with a piece of wrought iron. So be on the lookout for that. And we may make this. We may make this the giveaway hammer, but I'm not sure yet. So I have to see how everything progresses and how the video goes. So oh, it's all right, Jack. It's all right, Graham. Don't worry about it. Oh, S hooks for the win. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, so we are, getting, uh, we are getting a lot of traction on all the videos, and we thank you all so much for watching every last one of them. Uh, you know, it means a lot. It means a lot to us. It really does. And, you know, we just hope that we can keep blessing people uh, with uh, knowledge, of what I know, you know, or what I'm experimenting with, and hopefully everybody else can take and, um, you know, learn from that. And, you know... If you guys got any videos that you want to take and see, you know, be sure to just comment in the comment sections. And I just kind of go through and I pick which ones I think I can do on the on the, on the fly, go, on the fly mm -hmm. there. And I'll maybe I'll make a video out of it too as well. So God bless you, Donald Rock, Donald Roberts. Sorry. You should enter for yeah. Yep, will do so. Yeah, the Forge and Fire, that'll be an interesting one. If they ever contact me, I will probably say yes, just for fun. Just for fun. Uh, I do not expect to ever win anything in it. Uh, but, because I probably, well, I probably just won't forge a blade and I'll get disqualified in the first round. But, hey, <laughs> they'll say, they'll say blade, I say calla lily. So, well, you know, we'll see how that goes. You just have to make a point <laughs> end on the one end. Yeah, I just make it stabby. Bit on one end and I'll sharpen one edge so they can slicey bit there. 
Yeah, I would have a big enthusiastic stuff, so. Hey, good evening, Tim. Thank you for stopping in, buddy. God bless you. Oh. Greetings from Ohio. <laughs> Impregnable. That's an interesting name. Yeah, I make it look easy. <laughs> yeah, here's Roy. He made a flower. Yeah, that, can you imagine that? Like how they swiped different people and what they're doing? What is that guy creating? I don't know. But look at this guy. He's sweating and burning himself. Oh, that's awesome. And oh, look at that guy. He just he just took a knife out of the oil quench while it's still flaming. Wow, cinematography. What is he doing? What is he doing? Zoom in. What is he doing? Will he ever get it completed? At the end, it's just, it's a cow lily. I get disqualified, so. That, that, that would be hilarious, so. <laughs> it will not kill. Yeah, it will not kill. Ah, oh, man, that'd be great if I got to that round. Yeah, meat skewers. I could do that. <laughs> hey, Paul, that's good to know. I'll have to find a way of monetizing it. That way I at least get the views out of the deal. Considering uh, I won't be winning the check for 10 grand. <laughs> you guys are awesome out there. You guys are awesome out there. <laughs> you pay. This way. Reminder of our live streams. Oh, that's a good idea, Erin. Um, yeah, on Instagram or Facebook, we'll yeah. try to start doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Might have Roy uh, start the live stream and I go and post the link and stuff. Oh. Our time right now, we've been on for an hour and 26 minutes. I don't know what the actual time clock says. Step over here real quick. Okay. I have my phone right here. Yeah, our time right now is 8.27, but we start the live streams at 7 p.m. Eastern Time now. Yeah, sharpen anything. There you go. Who are us people? We're good people. We're knife-making people. Not knife-making people. You guys got me messed up. You're confused, Roy. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to mess everyone up. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh gosh, it's been a long day, and my jaw's sore. So, yeah, so I'm so I'm gonna stop talking now, guys. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, make sure to tune in next Friday for the next live stream. Share it around. Uh, you know, we're gonna be releasing the beam hammer and all the power hammer plans that go with it, and uh, the intro video. We'll get into that more. You know, next week. And also, we're going to be doing the giveaway again of the of the knife tongs themselves. So yeah, um, oh. yeah. So we will try to do some updates on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, so if you're not following us yet, yeah. it's Instagram.com/slash Christ Center Ironworks or Facebook.com/slash Christ Center Ironworks. Yeah, so we'll try to do that. Yeah. yeah, and you can follow us over there. Um, I'm not on Facebook. I'll just say that. So if you have technical questions and stuff, they're probably not going to get answered. Jessica manages the accounts, so yeah, I, sometimes um, I, I took questions to them, but, yeah, I, I took a little uh, uh, whatever they call it, siesta. Uh, well not siesta, hiatus yeah, or hiatus something. Or, yeah. I pretty much took a hiatus from Facebook for a year, so so I'm not on Facebook right now answering questions, but Jessica's there to take and manage stuff of pertinent information that she can help with. So so make sure to follow us over there. We'll put all that in the link of this description box when we're done with this video. And uh, hopefully everybody will enjoy it. And uh, like I always say, you know, God bless you all out there. And thank you so much for watching. And thank you all so much for taking and uh, being here on the live stream tonight. Uh, I'm going to go inside and rest my jaw now. And, uh, and for those who are new, you know, I had wisdom teeth removal about a, a year ago. ago. So, yeah, a or week. a week ago. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, see? I need to go to bed. Medication's kicking in finally. So, anyways, <laughs> uh, thank you all for being on this live stream. If you enjoyed it, you know, hit that like button and make sure to comment in the comment section. Once again, comment in the comment section. I don't make knives in order to be entered for the drawing next week to win them. Thank you all for watching. God bless you. 
And we're going to catch you all on the next one. Bye. Bye, everybody. Good night. <laughs>